Power Buddies, the Earthquaker would do it, eh, Jeffrey? I think they'd do it like that. on the quiet side. Good morning, everybody. It's Ken coming to you live from the Circle Island Ranch, live without a net, uh, which was like basically encompassed Jeff and I running in here going, oh shit, it's 11 o'clock, and that's why the volume level is more correct on the guitar. But Jeff's a genius. He's a master. He's a pro. I'm sure it sounded awesome. I'm doing what I can. Yeah. Oh, everybody, everybody, everybody. What do we got today? Uh, as I posted earlier, we are here to talk about the Warhawk DAW uh, in, we have two brand new colors. Uh, this is Purple Burst, of course, and there's a Silver Burst Beauty hanging on the wall over there. Can you see that Silver Burst Beauty, Jeffrey? Uh, I can. Nice. Uh, and all, we are continuing to make the Avocado Burst and the Red Burst into 2021. Uh, we threw out some new Warhawks last year in the DAW one handily, I gotta say. Um, we were still selling some 390s and some, some of the hardtail versions of this pickup arrangement, but the one with the trem um, had, it's, the response to this guitar uh, was much better than anything that we've had with the uh, Bayonet or anything that we've had in the Warhawk series so far up to this point in 2021. Uh, so we're running with it. Um, and uh, they're all in these funky bursts uh, per Nailer's idea, and I think they're super sweet. Uh, the Purple Burst has been kicking ass and taking names uh, in the uh, Descent baritone and the Triad bass, and so it seemed like kind of a quirky natural fit for the Warhawk DAW. The evolution of the Warhawk, some of you may know, started as a bolt-on in 2004, 2005, um, one of the original mirror-made, nailer-designed Reverend models. And, uh, and at the time, reverse headstock, uh, raised center ridge front and back. We did a humbucker version and we did a 2P90 version for a brief period of time. Uh, one of my favorite guitars, the guitar that won me over onto the idea of Naylor designing guitars and having Mirror Music realize his designs. Because I was, you know, I'd been working with Joe for five, six years at that point and guitar players are very, very resistant to change. I know, it's true though. And uh, I was a little weary. And then uh, Joe said, here, take this Warhawk and go do gigs. And first song, first gig, I was like, oh, shit. This guitar smokes the stuff we've been doing up to this point. <laughs> In my opinion, for the rock. Um, and, uh, yeah, of course, I still have my green uh, 290 Beauty. Um, and then the evolution, when Joe uh, started to do the set neck models, the original Roundhouse, the original Daredevil, the Manta Ray, the Volcano, uh, the Warhawk was moved into the set neck category as uh, Joe's body shape uh, realized into a set neck. And uh, we did humbuckers with reverse headstocks for a little while, and then we did some 390s, and then um, always with the hardtail. And then uh, all of a sudden the ridge was only on the front for a little while. And then uh, Joe made the bayonet as a trem equipped set neck, 24 and 3 quarter scale. And those two coexisted for a few years. 
And then last year, at the beginning of 2020, um, Mr. Naylor presented us with the idea of doing the Warhawk DAW, um, combining all of the features from a few different models onto one thing, onto one platform, and uh, it turns out it was a home run. So this is the pickup arrangement from the DA, stands for double agent, uh, humbucker in the bridge, P90 in the neck, uh, business up front, party in the back, one might say, uh, the mullet of guitars. And, um, and we've done so well with the DAOG and the DAW over the years. W stands for Wilkinson Trem. Uh, that it seemed uh, like we needed to check that out in the Setneck platform, and this was, the, of course, the perfect way to do it. Um, and then right, the, right around the time when we brought this out is when we started binding the headstocks on everything, which is a hell of a nice touch. Can they see that, Jeffrey? I don't even have to move. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And uh, also note on our bursts, they are bursted. Bursted. Bursted, man. A little Watt reference. Another Watt reference. Mm. Uh, bursted on the front and on the back, and I love that neck thing. I think that's super dope. And uh, all of the cool Reverend features, the pinlock tuners, and uh, the pure tone input jack on our custom jack plate. And these are uh, Joe's pickups, the HA5 humbucker and the 9A5 P90 soap bar style pickup on this Warhawk. Pow Ferro fingerboard bound up. Uh, let's get some clean. That is the neck pickup with all the controls wide open. A little warmer than the HPP because of the shorter scale length and the construction of the body. Just doing a little poetry performance art there for a second. It was starting to get weird, wasn't it, Jeff? Mm. We're, I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm keeping Jeff up this morning. You all right there, buddy? Huh? How you doing I'm then? I'm just checking the levels here, buddy. All right, all right. He's like, ah, every time check. he turns around, he turns that thing up. He turns it down. <laughs> he's driving me crazy. Um, both pickups on. Real nice, uh, chimey. <laughs> Combining the, uh, the mid-range punch of the uh, 9A5 with the with the you know sharp in the in the attack of the humbucker it's one of the reasons why in my mind this pickup configuration is so popular and of course the neck pickup by itself the soap bar in the neck is pure magic a little bit of uh, clone overdrive Let's, you know, let's just go full fuzz. Let's turn them all on. The Reverend Warhawk DAW available in 2021 in this fabulous purple burst. The bound headstock the gorgeous silver burst, and keeping in the line the avocado burst and the red burst. It's one of my faves. I started us off today um, jamming a little bit on my uh, Watt Plower 2, and uh, we've, we've been over this here on this show, but I still like playing those tones. The other day, um, I needed to move this. Uh, it was hanging here on the wall, and I needed to get it out of the way to take some pictures or something. And when I picked it up, I played those two silly chords on it. And then it stuck in my head. And then I looped the chords. And then I started playing in the key of A major after I talked to my son and asked him what key I should play in. Hmm. And, uh, and once he, he, he talked real slow and explained it to me. And he didn't have to get the tab out or nothing. But, you know, we did, we did discuss Close. it. I did, I did go home and tell Nate what I did, and Nate said, you know, you should really solo in this key and emphasize the F sharp. Wow. And I was like, oh, thanks, Nate. Thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, everybody should have a 16-year-old boy who knows more than you. Trust me. It makes life a lot easier. And uh, I'm not being facetious.
my kid's gotten into some crazy music theory lately, man, and it's kind of, he blows me away all the time. <laughs> I was telling this story. I'm going to do some name dropping now, Jeff. You ready? Oh, oh cool. Ready for ready I for this? love this. This is a true story. This happened. Uh, two things. I was talking to Pete Anderson on the phone last night for like an hour, and uh, we, were, we were sharing war stories, and uh, Pete is massively entertaining and has a whole bunch of funny stories to tell all the time. But I've been thinking about Pete because uh, two years ago today, I was partying with Pete at the Moose Lodge in Burbank. And uh, now there's no NAMM show, so we're, we're all being all nostalgic about all the NAMM show goings-ons and hanging on things around here now. So I was talking to Pete last night about this cool thing that we're working on with him that we're going to launch later this year that I'm not going to talk about anymore and then mention we're doing something cool with Pete. And... Um, we were talking about Wes Montgomery and some other stuff and other guitar things. And my kid, I, I really love this song by Wes Montgomery called People. It's just like the greatest. It, it's, it's like my favorite Wes Montgomery song. And it's a, it's a cover of somebody's pop hit from the 60s, but he, um, or 50s even. But he, uh, the song sort of picks up at the end and he just lays down the grooviest solo, you know, and it's just really, it's this really cool thing with Wes because he does all the chord stuff and all these chords that I don't know. And then, and then the song will pick up at the end, and then he'll he'll just like rip a whole bunch of single note stuff with his thumb. It's totally rad. And as you guys know, I don't, I'm not a big pick guy, so I like that stuff, even though it's I'm nowhere near as good at it as somebody like Gil. I really enjoy listening to it and and trying to figure it out. And um, I was telling my son how I always wanted to learn this guitar solo. I was like really into it, and he uh, he was like, oh cool. And then unbeknownst to me, he took that to heart and spent a few days in his room and he learned how to play that solo like note for note and then he put it into tab and emailed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> he had tab. it in sheet music for himself <laughs> because he's way better at that stuff than me but he dumbed it down into tab for his dear old dad and uh, and then uh, as Pete and I were joking about last night I still haven't sat down with it and learned it which makes me kind of a jerk so uh, I need to make time for that for sure. And uh, I don't know why I told that story, but uh, I did. Been thinking about that uh, music theory stuff a little bit lately. During the COVID, what I'm seeing is uh, a lot of people getting really, really good playing. I'm seeing a lot of people practicing and popping like really, really cool stuff online. How about you, Jeff? Are you seeing that? I'm seeing that. I mean, there's some. And from also with Brian Gross Bias. Oh. Guy's a machine. Yeah, dude's a machine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hi, and, Brian. But the youth. I mean, mm -hmm. the youth are blowing me away, you know. Um, my friend Trisha, that used to work at Chicago Music Exchange, is posting a video a day on Instagram um, with the She Shreds thing, you know. And, and she, is, um, she is exploring a new concept every day, and she's 21 days into it. And uh, I've watched every one, and they're all super entertaining. And big tackle. Big, that's, mm -hmm. a, like, that's a lot to bite off, yeah. you know. But she's not, you know, I mean, it's, we're still in this weird people working from home time and some people have time to do that and I admire all of you I think that's bad to the bone so uh, yeah check her out and uh, on the Instagrams she shreds she uh, yeah she's I know she's tagging she shreds on the post I don't I'm I don't know for you know I don't even know if her accounts private or not <laughs> I'm sitting here running my mouth you know I just I just admire I admire the tenacity I think it's really really cool to like try to take your playing to another level and it doesn't hurt that she's doing it all in a charger HP so. Oh, that's why you're talking about it. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yes. So there you have it. Uh, yeah, the Warhawk DAWs. Anyway, we can uh, want to just jump right to the questions, or should we talk about the brand new Reverend coffee mugs oh, that boy, are available in the Reverend? Oh, we're going to get a lot of Reverend. questions about that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> big know, changes around here. Shameless, shameless plug, we have a new mug. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this, I like that. I don't know. Shameless plug, cool. we have a new mug? Huh? Mm-hmm. It is the mug that it should have always been. It's a beauty. Yeah. It is a beauty. It's a, it's a, yes, a traditional flat bottom mug, mm -hmm. which turns out that the gentlemen here are much more appreciative of, which just means I had to give away a dozen of them right <laughs> out of the gate. But that's I just, okay. I just took one. <laughs> Jeffrey didn't even ask. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's how it goes. Mm. <laughs> All right. Fire away. You got All anything right. for me? Well, Steve Zinn, you know, came in hot and quick with uh, getting my question in early. Oh, okay. Why are you spilling the beans on the new model that you refuse to talk about? Oh, I, yes. I partially bean spilt on earlier this week. Yeah, so my, our good friend Jeff behind the keyboard over there 
was building out the web pages and accidentally put them live with no descriptions for a little while. But There's they a were description. They were yeah. There was a description. What did it say? This is a guitar. <laughs> it's a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new copywriter. <laughs> right. But they were uh, up long enough for screenshots to be grabbed, so people are talking about them. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold the line here and go. You know, we're still we're still easily four or five weeks away from shipping those to dealers, um, along with the new Greg. So I, I gotta wait till we get a little. We we still have stuff that we've released that we have to talk about. Um, we're as a matter of fact, we have been in uh, Gil Paris GPS mode for the last week i shot some i shot the official demo video here and uh, we've been taking a lot of questions about that and um, getting the charging system for that all dialed in and uh, so we have plenty to talk about for the next few weeks and then we have new colors um, that that we haven't discussed on this show yet uh, we did the roundhouse though right jeff i think we did solid i think we did colors. the roundhouse. yeah the solid colors on the I believe roundhouse so. I believe um, Kenny but is. we've got all those the beautiful green uh, double agent and jetstream 390 uh, mm -hmm. we've got the new descent ra in silver burst and um, and the descent w with the trim finally in midnight black cuz uh, we had numerous requests for that and uh, we've got a couple of new base colors to talk about natural karina uh, in the decision and uh, looks gorgeous and we're bringing the orange back and the Dove King, and we have stuff to do. Got and the new once Hauser. We, and the base Hauser, the mm -hmm. Fat Fish. Um, yeah, uh, Brad got his, and the pickup placement, he is really, he's happy with it. He digs it. Um, so what we did with the, the Brad's the new version of the Fat Fish has the thick grip pickup in the neck position instead of the uh, jazz neck. And so, or no, wait. It has, yes, you started the jazz neck. So it has a T-blade and a thick grip. So, uh, there's, there's so much going on, man. Mm. Uh, but when those new models drop, we will talk about them. We are as excited as we are for the new models. So, thanks for asking, Gio. Yeah. Uh, Gio. Sassy Cat wants to know how soon before we can see the new Golden Black Gristle Master 290. Same, same answer as the last question. We're not going to start shipping them to dealers for another four or five weeks, and so... I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna hold off until then to really get all of the stuff to clear out there so that you guys can you know run through them. Yes. But Greg on the other hand, boy, the fact that he talked about it. And then show it off, yeah. Show it off. And uh, and I'm gonna be really honest with you and just don't hurt my feelings. He said he did a hell of a lot better last year. And so just Can't uh, confirm. head on over to Greg's social media. Sites, go to his website, see what he's up to, Mr. Greg, the Bristol Master himself, and uh, you can check out the video of him. He has his prototype in Tokyo Turquoise uh, that he is dropping on the roundhouse. Also, him. Hey, Jeff, did I ever tell you the story about Greg and I and Russo? Probably. <laughs> You're going to tell it again, though, aren't you? <laughs> Greg and I were doing a clinic at Russo Music in uh, Ashbury Park, New Jersey, and uh, there were a whole bunch of celebrities behind us. And somebody uh, was taking questions, not unlike I am now. And somebody asked if they could hear something, uh, one of the guitars behind me. And I said, sure. And I stood up and grabbed it. And the guy said, no, no, the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait. I love that. <laughs> it appears, is your lab still on? I don't know. No. No. It's not? No. Your battery dead? Oh, I don't know. Tell me. What was the battery indicator say? Uh, it's empty and flashing. Is that Here. bad? <laughs> it's not great. Take mine. Am I back? Let's see. I will repeat the question. Or Jeffrey. Jeffrey is actually going to grab a battery. What does that mean? That means plane break, which is fine with me. Oh, you're back. Do I need to tell that dumb story again? Yes. Uh, Mr. Greg and I were doing a clinic together at uh, Russo Music in Asbury Park. And we were hosting, and we had a whole bunch, big, massive wall of reverence behind us. And when I was taking questions at the end of the event, 
uh, some guy asked here something specific that was hanging on the wall behind me and I went oh sure and I went to grab it and then the guy goes no no the other guy <laughs> so I know where I stand especially when Mr. Cock is around but Mr. Cock is a master he's a wizard he's the gristle master true story hi hey I think I'm back baby I'm looking forward to the day when we can have both Gil and Greg together playing their Fisherman Loaded guitars. That is going to be an awesome day. Um, it's coming. We're going to do some video here with the two of them. Hopefully, well, it was supposed to be next week, but travel is still difficult in the States, and so we have pushed back another 60 days. Uh, but we will have proper video with both <coughs> Greg and Gil eventually, because eventually um, we're all going to get vaccinated and everything's going to calm down enough that those boys can come and visit us, right, Jeff? Yeah, we can all hug and... Well, I don't know if we're going to hug. Yeah, maybe well, the, maybe the good thing that's coming out of all this is that we don't have to hug anymore. I agree. I'm not a big hugger. Yeah. So, now we're both back. We're both talking. and We're, we're talking, both, yeah. yeah. okay then. Well, that was a little segue there. Uh, Pretty there's exciting. There's some, some uh, questions about the old shirt you got on over there, the QMC. Is it quietly mocking cats? Is it quick-moving chupacabras? <laughs> well, I like those. Yeah. Uh, Quincy Mining Company, everybody. Very, very exciting in uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula uh, in the Keweenaw area. The Quincy Mining Company is on top of the hill in Hancock, Michigan. It is one of four existing um, hoist shaft houses uh, that are still in the UP from the days of the copper mining, and you can tour it and whatnot. Uh, my family owns a really cool uh, mineral-oriented uh, souvenir store in Calumet, Michigan called Copper World. If you're ever up in Calumet, run into Copper World. Tell them I said hello. And uh, they have uh, all kinds of gear from various uh, places and attractions and things in the UP and in the Keweenaw and stuff. And uh, I've taken, you can actually tour the Quincy Mine and go underground and we've taken the kids in a couple times. It's super rad. Um, and all of that is hosted by uh, Michigan Tech's um, uh, engineering college. And so the, the students take you into the mine and show you stuff. It's, it's really, really cool. It's a really, really cool thing. You asked, now you know. Uh, Michael Kilfoy says, Ken, will you ever do set necks with the unfinished slash finished, like the bolt-on necks? Uh, yes, uh, the Rick Vito Soul Shaker has a set neck on a glass gloss body guitar. Uh, my guess is that'll be addressed here and there on certain products. So it, we set the precedent that we can do it. Um, you know, that's one of those things. Uh, people who like one or the other insist that they're right. And so I don't think that there's any right or wrong answer. We just kind of go with the traditional route. Um, if it's a set neck finish, if it's a set neck guitar with a gloss finish, we just paint everything like has historically been done on set neck instruments. Uh, Mr. Vito requested a satin finish on the neck, which we were able to comply with, which was cool. So we can do it. Uh, I don't have any immediate plans right now, but it'll probably return on something someday. The interesting thing, of course, about the satin finishes, and this applies to the satin finish that is on the roasted maple necks as well, with enough use, you will gloss them up. And uh, on a painted guitar like this, they will gloss up quicker. I don't know why, hmm. but there's physics involved. Can't fight Science. physics. Yeah. Can't fight physics. Magnets. I know, right? Uh, Darrell. Hi, Darrell. Says I'm getting a rail hammer hyper vintage put in the bridge. Kick Not ass, getting yeah, it back man. Next week. Oh, says, on one of these. Well, he says any thoughts on doing a Warhawk with a Nuevo 90 neck in a hyper vintage bridge like the Charger RA? Well, I see. Yeah, we'd be. We'd be getting back into bayonet territory there a little bit, but with the raised center ridge and stuff, that would be cool. While I don't have any immediate plans to do a rail hammer loaded Warhawk, nothing is outside of the realm of possibility. Would be dope. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but the, um, the, uh, the Huevos 90 has turned into the Heavy 90 across uh, the website and things of that nature. Just a little, little name change action going on. Um, a little more apt description. And uh, that, that Huevos 90 uh, bridge and Nuevo 90 neck combination is 
arguably my I favorite. I have it in all of my guitars. Yeah, it just crushes, <laughs> man. There's just something about it, you know. It's just absolutely excellent. And, um, and it sounds good set neck. It sounds good bolt on. Uh, it sounds good. I, have, I currently have that pickup uh, configuration loaded into a Floyd Rose equipped Sur standard. And it's funny because it doesn't, it sounds, I, I've never heard a Super Strat Floyd Rose guitar sound quite like that. It emphasizes some really cool frequencies and it's just a, it's a monster. It's a rocker. Those mm. pickups rule. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott Bussey wants to know, would a heavy 90 rail hammer in the bridge position blend well with a neck P90? It would. Hawk? It would. What, what happens with the, um, you get to a point in output on the pickups where, especially in tube amps, the tube amps start to see it as like a compression thing. Um, and so, yes, they do balance well. Uh, you can play with the height of the pickup. You know, um, if you find, like if you play a very, very stark, clean amplifier, like a, you know, um, like a Roland Jazz Chorus or something. I know those are real popular. Uh, they were, though. They were very, very popular at one time. Um, but I find this with even like the, um, the, the Roland Jazz Chorus settings on the Boss Katana are pretty convincing. Um, they sound really good, uh, but if you're, if you're playing that clean and that stark on the front end of an amplifier, you might need to play with the balance of the pickups if it's very important to you that the pickups have similar output. Um, my thinking on two different pickups has always been, I, I think I brought this up last week, we, Joe used to do a model many years ago uh, called the Commando. And the original version of the Commando had a lipstick in the neck and a humbucker in the bridge, kind of like, uh, who else did that? Charbel did that with the Surfcaster, mm -hmm. right? And the pickups are wildly out of balance with one another. But the thing that's kind of fun about that is, is if you're, you know, if you're playing like Ward and you're doing some like jangly chordy stuff, you can be on the neck pickup and have that sort of wide open jangle chord thing. And then when, if you're in the band where you're doing that at some point and then at other times you have to play lead, once you, you're, you have your rig set up to be clean on the neck pickup and to be dirty on the bridge pickup and you're getting the output that you need from both of those pickups in order to run that rig. So that's another way that you can sort of think about having your stuff set up when you're playing. Me personally, I just play on a bridge pickup all the time. Yeah. So, except for when I'm sitting in this chair. <laughs> I always think, I always think, man, this sounds good, and then I get with my band, and I'm like, oh yeah, they uh -uh. they didn't make that part for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's not. Those aren't the parts I play in this band. <laughs> uh, Kevin, from JJ Hat Center. Hi, my man. I got on my Italian wonder right here, boy. I sure do. Uh, mm -hmm. He says his fourth reverend arrives in an hour. He's feeling giddy. Thanks, Dude. Ken, Joe, Penny, and Zach Green. Nice. He says, what guitar and amp does Naylor play? Naylor plays a very, very heavily modified Air Sonic W um, into, well, <laughs> Naylor. Naylor. Naylor, it changes a lot. Naylor, Naylor's got like a massive pedal board with one of those Carl Martin OctaSwitch things that he has different paths running through different pedals at all times. Um, and his gain comes from the pedal board. So he's been using loud, clean amps. Um, he was using uh, qu one of those quilter 300 watt things or something with burning things, the last few burning things shows, but that was like a year ago. Um, since then, he has acquired that high watt stack that is in that birthday picture of his. <laughs> and I, and I, while burning things has, hasn't had a gig since well, a year ago tonight, probably, um, yeah. in California, um, the, I would imagine when Joe comes back that the high watts are going to be behind him. And the Aerosonic has a heavy 90 bridge pickup in it, by the way. Or, you know what? It might have a Kyle Shutt bridge pickup in it, too. Those are Joe's, Joe's two favorite pickups are the heavy 90 and the Kyle Shutt. And that Kyle Shutt set is rad, too. I, you know what? All the real hammers sound good. I'm going to quit waxing yeah. about the real hammer pickups. will be like, find your sound. You know what? Oh, chisels? Oh, those sound great. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're not going to Oh, the clean cuts? Yeah, man. The clean cuts are really cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. duh. <laughs> Uh, so Ray Mayberry wants to know if there's any thoughts on the future of the Air Sonic. Now, while we're on the topic, uh, well, the hard the hardtail took uh, a hiatus for this year, um, but the Air Sonic W is is sort of Joe and I. I mean, 
I feel, I don't know if Joe feels the same way, but I feel it's the ultimate evolution of, of Joe's guitar design. The guitar is a classic and a mainstay in the Rebel line. The Air Sonic W goes nowhere. Uh, the RA just had to drop out for a little while because I had to make some room in order to launch some of these new products. But eventually we should bring the hardtail back too. And I would like to see, I would like to see us screw around with different pickup configurations and stuff at some point. But really, all that's on Joe. And um, when Joe designed that guitar, I mean, I, he had his pickups in mind. He had the Railhammer pickups in his head, um, keeping that, that low end crisp without it getting too bright, you know what I mean? Um, and so the sonic realization of that guitar came through the rail hammers. And so I don't know if Joe would be into, you know, soap bars or putting anything else in it, but he might, you know, we'll, we'll have to see where it goes. Uh, but the Air Sonic definitely lives on because the guitar crushes. It is a monster. I should be gigging with one. I should be gigging with a lot of things. You know what, Jeff, I, I need a new guitar. I have one. Yeah, you do. I use it to record. Mm -hmm. in one of my bands recently. Mm -hmm. and it sounded awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Lonesome Chris Todd in the Hard Chargers. <laughs> Mouthful. Yeah. Says, do you know if the newer Reverend strap buttons and or the Pure Tone jacks can be bought aftermarket to upgrade an older Reverend? The uh, Pure Tone jack can be found on all parts um, in various other things. I think you can search it on Reverb and find Pure Tone jacks. I don't personally... Um, stock them for resale. Um, we only have them for the instruments themselves. And uh, the strap button, that is a very, very good question. Um, the strap button was an upgrade from Mir, and I don't really know all the details about that. Uh, but our, our friends in Korea were like, hey, we have this available. Would, would you guys be interested in using it? And we were like, yeah, yeah, we would. Because we had that, that sort of funnel-shaped one before, yeah. which was functional. But And I'm going to be honest, sharp. too. I never really thought about strap buttons because the first thing that I do is put Schaller-style strap locks on every guitar that I own mm -hmm. because I've been using the same disgusting guitar strap for 25 years uh, with the Schaller strap locks rusted to it. And so I, I have a whole stack of those buttons around, and I throw those buttons on all the guitars that I play out with. So I never really thought about it until we got these. And then we got those beautiful straps from our friends at Gator Levy's plug-in. Man, I'm, am I, I'm Man, on fire today. on fire. I, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, and those, those mate perfectly with these, you know, and with the wider flange and stuff. I mean, you got to kind of twist them on, mm -hmm. but that's good because that means they ain't going to fall off, right? Um, that is a good question, and maybe I'll bring that up when we all get together about the possibility of ordering some of these buttons and putting them in the store. Because that is a good question. Yeah. They are they are very nice. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Sean McKenzie wants to know if a rail hammer can fit a HSS in the middle slash neck. Depends on the instrument. It's too complicated a question, I'm afraid. Um, with a 22 fret neck, yes, you should be able to custom pick guard and do that. Um, we've done it. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've we've I've seen it done on like American strats and stuff, um, uh, but you have to obviously you have to make sure that the body has got a nice big swimming pool route, and then you're going to need a custom guard to do it, like a three humbucker guard. But if you have like a three humbucker guard or a three humbucker guitar, they should drop right in um, without without any issue. On ours, boy, I'm not really sure. Haven't done it. Haven't done it to a six gun, so I don't really know. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Kilfoy says, how about a Gibson scale bolt-on? How about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, we did that for a couple years with the artist that used to be a really good friend of mine. And, um, and it, was, it was really, really cool guitar. It was sonically really cool. Uh, but we, I just don't have, a, I don't have a platform for it at the moment. You know, um, but maybe I never say never. You know, I, I would like to bring that back in some some form at some point. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. That's you know that it's interesting that you bring that up because that is something that I do need to discuss with Mr. Joe. Um, I've had a handful of requests for a 24 and three quarter scale bolt on again. So indeed, uh, Jansen says ignoring the pickups and trim for a second. Is there anything specific about the Warhawk construction itself? It gives it a different tonal character from your other set necks. It is this, um, not unlike the Aerosonic guitar, 
how we see and how we see in the end on that. Yeah, seeing, I mean, seeing, seeing the fingerprints good. <laughs> always. Um, the raised center ridge that is on the front and back of this guitar um, makes allows for more mass underneath of the bridge, which gives you a little more initial attack. And then because the wings are thinner, the wings vibrate, and they don't vibrate as freely on the Warhawk as they do, say, on the Air Sonic, where they're, they're very, very thin, and we have the F-hole punched in them and stuff. It does contribute to sort of the resonance of the instrument by having the thinner wings versus the thicker center block. Um, and that combined with the fact that it's a set neck gives it its own character. So there you have it. What yeah, else you got, Jeff? Um, so, Inspector Trout 99. Yeah, it says, any thoughts on a set neck air sonic with a 24 three quarter scale? Haven't had any. Um, <laughs> Until now. Yeah, I mean, interesting. Uh, that, you know, that would be more, that would be a better question for Joe. And I swear I've said this before. We're going to have Joe in this room. We are going to do that this year once we get, well, Joe just turned 60 week. last week. So we for sure got to get him vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And then he'll, he'll be allowed to leave the house again. He's a top priority. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we will get Joe in here, and you, we can ask those questions of Joe personally. Um, I, when Joe sat down to design the Aerosonic, he envisioned it as a bolt-on. So I don't know that his mind has ever taken it in that direction because he wanted it to sound a certain way, and part of the tone that he was looking for in his head comes from the fact that it's a bolt-on guitar. Um, so I don't know if... If a set neck air sonic would differ vastly from what I'm holding now, I'm not really sure. But I, Joe, Joe would really, uh, Joe is the one to answer that question. I should shut up now. Uh, Peg Bundy is here. Hi, Peg. She says, How many design decisions do you make personally? Do you choose the colors or if the guitar is a binding, roasted maple, et cetera, or is that all nailer? It's all nailer. Uh, Penny and I throw colors out there based on stuff that is. Um, uh, stuff that's popular, you know, um, because I can sort of look at something and go, oh, well, you know, like we make this in three colors and these two colors really pop and this is the color that isn't really doing very well. And I will share that information with Naylor and Naylor would be like, oh, well, instead of making that color, why don't we try this or why don't we try that or whatever. So we're involved in the conversation like that, but more or less, I mean, Joe, um, when, when Joe comes up with a, a new guitar design, he presents it to us in the colors that he wants to see it in, and we roll it out there. Uh, because, I mean, it's his, it's his vision, man. It's his voice, dude. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and again, the features and stuff like that is, is something that um, is loosely based on, you know, we don't tell like a super hard line. If we get enough requests for something, like again, like I'm having a lot of requests for the 24 and three quarter scale bolt on because we've addressed it in the past and we're not doing it now. We get enough requests for something, I will tell it to Joe and say, hey Joe, you know, we'd kind of like to work this back into the line somewhere. But then what he does with that information is his own thing. I am not a guitar designer, nor am I a luthier. I am a desk writer mm. and guitar player. And Bill Payer. And Bill Payer and get in the back of the van and go to the gig guy. Mm. Uh, Joe is the designer slash luthier, and the guy who can sort of, you know, he can, he can listen to these artists talk about what they're looking for in a tone and then turn it into a reality, which is, uh, which is an amazing skill, so. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. What do you think, Jeff? Is that where we, we're getting there? We, we getting some, there, we buddy? Got we got some more. You got some more? Okay, mm -hmm. I, I can do a few more. I mean, this one's oh, easy for you. Oh, that's quarter two. Yeah, fire yeah. away. Uh, Trey Johnson from Tulsa Band of Guitars says, I've heard oh. that buying a Reverend guitar can actually make you play better. Is this true? It's true, and also it can make you levitate. If you look online, there's a lot of pictures of people who get a Reverend and then they start to levitate. It's a very, very interesting phenomenon. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce Wrigley. Hi, Bruce. So back in the fall, you mentioned a guitar that was coming out that we would never imagine Reverend making. Have we seen that yet, or is it still to come? Can you see that over there? You can see it. It is on screen. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that GPS when we when when we first uh, when we first nailed that down and decided that we were going forward with it, I was like, I was a little leery. I ain't gonna lie to you. 
you know, because it just seemed really outside of the box of what we do. But now it's been welcomed. It's been welcomed in the building, and it appears to have been welcomed by you guys. I took a little heat for it, I, and I knew I was gonna, and I don't care. That's fine, you know. Um, but the, those Fluence pickups being available in that platform without mods, without a battery box, without doing all the work yourself, you know, because I mean, basically, if you want to get those pickups in a guitar, you got to spend $400 on the pickups and then pay somebody to put them in because it's not, you know, there's, there's stuff that needs to be done. Of course, the intermediate level tech can get it done. I mean, but um, it's really, really cool the way it sits, having all those options. And, uh, and it sure has made Gil happy. Gil's just thrilled about this guitar. And again, I can't wait to do stuff with him personally. And I got to admit, I had a hell of a time doing the demo video on that guitar the other day when we shot that in here, Jeff. I, I, I kind of forgot where I was for a minute. And Jeff was like, will you quit playing that lick? <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't think I will. Yeah, so. Well, I'm the one who has to hear it over and over again as I edit it. Yeah, you know. You took the job. That's the way she goes. Yeah. <laughs> That, because that's where I, you know, this is where the mistake was made. Here it comes. Here, there it is. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, this is where his palm pushed the springs into the pickup right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. there it is. Cool, everybody. Hey, check it out. I'm out. We uh, we're gonna have a busy weekend this weekend, and uh, next week we will whip out some more of these new colors. Maybe we can talk about descent baritones. We haven't talked about those in a little while. Uh, maybe we can get on that next week. That sounds like fun. In the meantime, um, look for uh, an official video for the Warhawk DAW. We'll lock that in, and, um, and we will go forward from there. Thank you, everyone. You all have a wonderful weekend. If you have any further questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. And uh, hopefully we're going to get little gal back in here at some point within the next few weeks. So stay tuned, everyone, and thank you so much. There it is.